Lord has given me uh, for the church. If you can turn with me to Luke chapter 5, and we're going to be going over verse 4 through 11. 4 through 11. Because now that we are talking right, we are thinking right, the thing that we must do is come out of a comfortable place. Okay? We, 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 we now have the right talk. We have the right uh, uh, thought process. Now we need to move. And many of us are still stuck in a place of fear to where we don't want to move. Amen? And we know that God did not give us a spirit of fear, but a power of love and of sound mind. Amen? Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. Amen. I thought I left my other eyes at the house. I was going to be lost with that. All right, here we go. Luke chapter 5, we're going to read verse 4 through 11. Amen. <laughs> and it says, when he stopped speaking, oops, where am I at? Mm -hmm. yeah. When he stopped speaking, he said to Simon, launch out into the deep. I want to go, I want to go, let's, let's go to, uh, let's just start at chapter one because there's some points I want to bring up. So, uh, chapter five, verse one, we're going to read uh, to 11. So it says, so uh, it was as a multitude pressed about him to hear the word of God, that he stood by the lake of Gasseret, I may have mispronounced that, and saw two boats standing by the lake, but the fishermen had gone from them and were washing their nets. Verse 3, then he got into one of the boats, which was Solomon's, and asked him to put out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the multitude from the boat. Verse 4, when he had stopped speaking, he said to Solomon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. At your word, I will let down the net. Verse 6, and when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish, and their net was breaking. Verse 7 says, so they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them, and they came and filled both boats, both of the boats, so that they began to sink. When Solomon Peter saw it, he fell down at Christ's knee, saying, depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of the fish which they had taken. Verse 10, and so also were James, John, and son of the sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, do not be afraid, for now on you will be you will catch men, excuse me, you will catch men. Verse 11, so when they had brought their boats to land, they forsook all and followed him. They forsook all and followed him. In this hour, God is calling us to come out of our comfort zone and to take a risk. Taking a step of faith. Many of us say we have faith but we're not operating in faith. The Bible says faith without works is dead. Amen? So we can talk about it, but if we ain't being about it, it don't make no sense because ain't nothing going to happen. Anything in the spirit realm, in the kingdom of God, functions through faith. So if you're not moving in faith, then you're really not moving the kingdom to uh, uh, affect your life. To affect your life. Amen? So when we look at the definition of risk, the definition of risk is the possibility of loss or injury. The possibility of loss or injury. So what fears an individual from moving forward? The possibility of losing? The possibility of what people are going to say? What people are going to think? Some people need to be delivered from people. Amen? Amen. 
Glory be to God. Because some people can prevent you from walking into your blessing. From uh, 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 getting to your breakthrough based upon what you assume that they're going to think or they want to say. Because nine times out of ten, whatever the Spirit of the Lord is going to have you do is going to go against what the world says. Amen. Amen. So if you have a fear of moving outside of the box, outside of the norm, outside of what it is that God is telling you to move into, then you're missing the fullness of what God has for you. And God is getting tired of us being uh, satisfied with the little when he has so much more for us. Okay. So much more for us. Amen. We frame our possibilities on the ability, the abilities and the things we believe and have witnessed. Mm -hmm. And have witnessed. You see, when the Spirit of the Lord tells you to do something that you've seen Jephro do, but Jephro got got uh, 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 rebuked or Jephro got talked about, now you judging your experience upon what happened over here. Right. And so you choose not to move. Mm -hmm. When God is in control of everything, mm -hmm. he said, we got favor. So if we have favor and he's telling us to move, I would assume that whatever he's telling us to do, we're going to be favored in it. Amen. 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 And we'll be able to receive what it is that he has for us to receive. It says that in the beginning here, what did it say? Verse 1. It was talking about how the multitude pressed about him to hear the word of God. To hear the word of God. Now, we must understand one thing that this was not the actual call because Peter and Simon and John, they done, they done been around the Lord. They, they done been around him. They, 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 they conversed with him. They know him. Hallelujah. But what was taking place here is there was a revival breaking place. It taking place. There was a revival taking place. Whenever there's a pressing, whenever there's a draw of people in such a way, it's a revival. Revival draws people in. Amen. So if there isn't a draw in, a lot of what's taking place has been humanistic. Because whenever the spirit of the Lord is taking place, it's going to draw people in. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. So he goes on to say that it was such a draw, hallelujah, that he needed to be able to get into a place to where everyone can, can hear him. And they didn't have mics back then. You see, so when you would speak in those days and you would speak in, in the water, the water would, 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 would uh, make your voice more audible. So what he seen was he seen these two boats. So he decided to hop into one. Nobody was in it, but he knew who it was. So he asked Peter, at the time Simon, to take him out a little ways. Take him out a little ways. So what was he doing? He was asking Peter or Simon to do something for him. How many times has God asked you to do something and you just turned and said, no, I'm busy. Okay, they were cleaning the nets. They just came in. They were out all night toiling. They were, were doing a the thing. They didn't catch nothing. He's all, all messed up because, see, back then, see, I used to be a fisherman. So I know what it's like when you go out and you come back and you ain't caught nothing. You got all these people you got to pay. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And you ain't made no money. Mm -hmm. So you ain't trying to hear nothing. Mm -hmm. Somebody walk by you, they talk to you. Man, I ain't got time to talk right now. I don't want to hear what you got to say. So here come, here come the Lord say, I need you to stop what you're doing. Hop in your boat and take me out a little ways. Mm -hmm. Okay? God is really speaking to a lot of us in this hour. Come on, come on. Pray. But we ain't listening. Why aren't we listening? Because of the purpose. Many of us are in a purpose. What you're going through is purpose. Why is it purpose? Because you got to come out of yourself. You got to come out of yourself. There's some things in you that the things that you are going against that's coming against you are meant to come against you to bring some things out of you. Amen. To strengthen you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. But see, we are so... Uh, 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 tuned into our own self that we can't see it for what it really is. The Bible says uh, uh, count it all joy or consider being joyful in the midst of trials and tribulations. Yes. Why? Because it's the testing of your faith. Mm -hmm. This is what the Bible said. So why are we murmuring and complaining? 
Why, why are we uh, 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 calling our, our, our girlfriends and our homeboys and just, 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 just complaining about the situations we're dealing with? When it's all based upon purpose and getting us to another place in him, outside of us. I was talking to somebody the other day. I said, we are our worst enemy. We are our worst enemy. We get in the way of blocking what it is that God is trying to do in our life. Amen. 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 So he said here, he said that as he's gone out, as he's gone out a little ways, and he begins to minister to the people, hallelujah, that now he comes back and he says, take and go out into the deep. Launch your boats into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. When I read this the other day, <laughs> when I read this the other day, it really, it really hit me. Because many of us are in a comfortable place in our life. Some of us are in an uncomfortable place. And really, that's where God wants us. He wants us in an uncomfortable place. So when he say move, we'll move. Because we don't like this uncomfortable. Do you want to be stuck in some sticker bushes? Come on. And God say, okay, you can come out now. You're going to fly out because right. it's uncomfortable. Right. Yes. You see, but when you're in a comfortable place, you're going to be like, oh, this is comfortable. I really don't want to leave this. So he wants us to stay uncomfortable. So when he says move, we'll move. Amen. So he's telling them to go out into the deep. Now, they just came back. They've been out all night. There ain't nothing out there. But the thing of it is, is they have not pressed. They did not go further. They did not go higher. They did not go deeper to get what it is that the Lord has for them. Do you know when you do something for the Lord that he is going to bless you? Every blessing there is a command. There's something that he's asking of you to do before you receive the blessing. But what we want to do is receive the blessing and do nothing for him. And it don't work that way. The kingdom of God does not work that way. You know, and this is where we, 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 take, we take pieces of the world and pieces of our own self-centeredness and selfishness and try to plug it in to our relationship with God. And it don't work. You have to sacrifice. You have to give. Look at Christ. God gave his only begotten son. He gave. Love gives. It sacrifices. It says that one of the gifts of the Spirit is long-suffering. Okay? So there's some suffering, there's some pain, there's some sacrificing. Things that take place to receive what it is that we desire. To what it is that we want for our lives to get into that place of purpose. So as Peter is hearing this, he's like, we've been out all night. I ain't trying to go back. I just cleaned my nets. Matter of fact, they ain't even clean. You told me to stop. But because you said, because you said, see, this lets us know that he knew who he was. Yes. You see, mm -hmm. because if I walked up to you and told you to go and do something you just did and, and you'd be like, no, I, I ain't going to do that. But they knew that, that there was something about him, that there was something about him that if we follow what he said, that would be blessed. I mean, they they seen the, the healings, they seen the signs and wonders that he performed. But 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 at the same time, there was still a little bit of them that didn't want to come all the way over. But see, when their money was affected, because this is was their livelihood, this is how they took care of their, their families, their children. And they went out all night and came back with no money. And he says, go a little deeper. And they say, because you said so, I'll do it. Amen. Because you said so, I'll do it. Sometimes, people of God, God is calling us to go a little higher, stay on the floor a little bit longer, stay in prayer another five or ten minutes. Fast for another day or two. Take it to another level. Because you're staying in that comfort zone. You're not willing to Go further. You're not willing to press harder. Because it's in the pressing that we're able to break through those things that are preventing us from uh, uh, reaching the blessing. From reaching the blessing.
Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So, in that, whose voice, thank you, Holy Ghost, whose voice are you following? Mm. Mm. Whose voice are you following? There's, there's three voices that we, we hear. We hear our own voice. We hear the enemy's voice. Amen. And we hear the voice of the Lord. Whose voice are you following? Sometimes we can misconstrue our voice for the Lord's voice. Because our voice is going to speak with the flesh one. And we'll say, oh yeah, that's what the Spirit of the Lord said. Well. You know, because that's really what we want. We must be able to discern the voice of God and being prophetic people. Hallelujah. And moving prophetically, you must not just jump at the first thing that you hear. It says, discern the spirit and know that it is of God. And that goes for you too, not just the, the people out, outside of you. That goes for you too, because uh, uh, deception would not be deception if you knew you were being deceived. Amen? So sometimes you got to check your own self. Amen. Mm -hmm. it, it ain't always the enemy. Well. Glory be to God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Verse 7, verse 7, verse 7. Verse 7 says, so they signaled, let me go up to verse 6, and when they had done this, when they had done this, what did they do? They listened and they followed the Spirit of the Lord. They did what he said to do. He said to go out into the deep. So despite being out all night, despite knowing that where we were there was nothing, they heeded to the voice of the Lord. And in doing so, in doing so, we get into verse 7, where it says, and they signaled to their partners, excuse me, let's go to verse 6, and when they had done this, they caught a, a great number of fish, and their nets were breaking. And their nets was breaking. So what this, what this told me was that if I listen to the voice of God, then there's an abundance in him. There's an abundance following his word. There's an abundance, hallelujah, taking the step outside of my comfort zone. Yes. Even though my mind wants to tell me that something terrible is going to happen. That, that somebody's going to say this or, or do that. Hallelujah. Sometimes we have to press through the fear. Sometimes it's because we don't have enough self-confidence in our own self. So then they'll start playing against our mind. Oh, I can't do that. I can't do that. I can't. I can't. I, I can't. You can do all things through Christ. Yes. Amen. That's what the Bible said. Hallelujah. So where is your belief? Where is your faith? Hallelujah. Glory be to God. God has been speaking to me in this house. He has been speaking to me. There's particular things he has been saying. There's been particular things he's been saying that go of. There's even visions that he has given you pertaining to witty ideas for finances. But some are saying, I can't. Well. Some are saying, I won't. Preach. Preach. Some just ain't moving. But he says that as you move, that you will receive your blessing. Wow. Listen. Listen. The blessing was so abundant that it says that Simon had to call for his partners to help him. Mm. Now, listen. As your friends help you in the midst of your blessing, they're going to get blessed. As you help someone that is being blessed by God, hallelujah, you're going to get blessed. So if there's something that you desire in your life, go help somebody that wants that same thing and watch them get blessed as well as you get blessed. Come on. But what we want to do, hallelujah, by listening to the enemy is we want to have a, 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 a little jealousy, a little envy towards this individual because they got what I want. Hallelujah. We're supposed to rejoice with them. Amen. 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 Not to go and talk about it. They got that new car. They can't afford it anyway. They work at McDonald's. But don't you know whatever God gives you, he's going to supply. Hallelujah. You don't need that, that payment. Ain't nothing. God got it taken care of. If it's from God. Come on. Because he ain't going to put more on you than what you can bear. Come on. Amen. 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 
Glory be to God. Hallelujah. So, listen. These three men were blessed. Wow. Why? By following the voice of the Lord. Take 10 seconds and ask yourself, have you been following the voice of the Lord? Have you been doing what he has been asking for you to do? He's even, I mean, the, from the little things like waking up at 3 o'clock in the morning and using the bathroom, knowing that the Spirit of the Lord is saying, pray. Yes. And what do you do? Well, I, mm. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm just going to lay, I'll lay down and pray. Mm. Nah, I, I'm guilty. I'm guilty. Because I know when I lay my head on that pillow, within a split second, I'm asleep. Come on, tell it. Tell Amen. It. Tell Amen. It. Amen. See, we must begin to follow the voice of the Lord. If he can trust you with the little things, can you pray? I I'm telling you to wear this suit. Wear that suit. There's a purpose behind that suit. Mm -hmm. I don't like that suit. I don't care if you don't like the suit. I'm telling you to wear the suit. Right, right. Okay? The little things. He's always speaking. But are we listening? That's the question. Because many of us are missing blessings because we ain't listening. Many of us are on our our tune, uh, you know, the little tune thing. Uh, we off, we way off. We need to fine tune and get that thing right so we can hear. And how do we do such a thing? By spending time with him in prayer. In prayer. Hallelujah. What is your prayer life like? And I'm not just talking about prayer, but I'm talking about worship. I'm talking about your relationship. Not just a relationship, but he said that we are the bride. So if we are the bride, that means it's an intimate relationship. You see, there's different levels of relationship. You see, the church don't want to talk about the levels. They just want to talk about the relationship. And what we're missing is we're missing the type of relationship that he is looking for in us. And that is an intimate relationship, a love relationship, to where we're able to get on our face and just give him our love. Pour out our love upon him. Let him know how much we love him, how much we care for him. That's the type of relationship that he wants with us. Because when you have that type of relationship, now when he speaks, you move him. Amen. And, and, and when you're going through something, something's coming at you, he's moving. Some of us... Some <laughs> Oh, Lord, have mercy. Listen, sometimes we be going through something. It talks about this in uh, Proverbs, where wisdom says, I'm just going to sit back and watch you get beat up because you don't want to listen. Teach this thing. Amen. Hallelujah. When you love the Lord, I mean, really love the Lord, and you're giving me your affection. Amen. He's like a husband. Right. He will protect you. Yes. When anything comes your way, he's there. Bam! Boom. You ain't, you ain't gotta pray. Hit that. All you gotta do is stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Yeah. That's what the Bible says. Fix that thing. Amen. Yes. Glory be to God. We must begin to hear. We must begin to hear the voice of God. Amen. 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 Because he's always speaking. But are we listening? Hallelujah. And I decree and declare even right now, Lord, hallelujah, that the spiritual ears of your people, Father God, come alive. Hallelujah. That all of the wax, all of those things that are clouding, Father God, the, 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 your voice, Lord God, that they may hear you. Yes. And as they hear you, Lord God, move in you to receive the blessings that you have yes, for them in Jesus' name. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. So listen, they were blessed. They were blessed because one, they helped Simon. Simon was given an assignment. He was given something to do. He was told to go out. And he fulfilled that even though he just came back in. He had faith enough in the word of the Lord that he went out and was blessed. Now in his blessing, here come the others that came alongside and helped him. The Bible goes on to say, it goes on to say in verse 8, it says, when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down to Jesus' knees saying, depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. He said, depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. <laughs> when he saw the blessing, when he saw the blessing, 
He did not tell the Lord to depart from him. Okay, that, that'd be foolish. You know, somebody going to bless you, you're going to be like, get away from me. <laughs> that'd be foolish. Amen? It's a different meaning here. Okay? Because he was able to really see himself as nothing. Just, just, just a sinful man. Understanding the, 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 the way he talked, the way he acted, the way that he behaved, all of this type of things. He, he did not feel worthy enough. 